Hi guys, welcome to another tutorial. Today we're going to be doing some tips in Fusion that can help your workflow and enhance your working with Fusion. The first tip is about how to save macros. There are basically four different types of macros you can do. First, let me show you how this works. Let's bring in, um, let's bring in these two clips. Let's just delete the audio. Let's create a handle, create a handle here, then back together. Switch fit, we can get it. What is the transition? We can trust to solve. Right click on it, come back to view here. Let's just open it in Fusion page. Now, for this, let's assume we created a bunch of nodes in between here. Just right click on this and on okay. So let's see we created all our nodes are in here. Media 2 is connected, media in 1 is connected. And you want to now save this as a macro. You select all the nodes, but make sure you don't select media in 1 or 2 or media out. Select that. And then you right click on any of the nodes and say save, create macro. And we say save as group. On the fusion, you click on fusion to go back up. Then you scroll down open templates then open edits because you want the effect to be on the edit page there are four types of effects you can create effect basically relates to manipulating video so if you want to manipulate video make it darker put an effect put lines and all that stuff you can create a macro and save it under effects if it's just generating like a background or graphics or something of the sort you can put that on the generators then for titles that is self-explanatory lower thirds, titles, all that stuff. Then transitions, also self-explanatory. Hope that answers your question a bit. So anything you save in here, you just, can just go to the location on the edit page. I will find it in there. Moving on to the next point. Let me give you an example of one inefficiency I've been doing in most of my tutorials recently. Let's bring in a merge node. Let's bring in a rectangle of a mask. Now, let's say I connect this media into to foreground input and I bring in a background let's say I drop the alpha to zero and I connect this to the background input of merge one I drag this to the left viewer so we have this now let's say I connect this rectangular mask to this mask input I have this going you see I've used a total of three nodes to generate this mask but this could be made simpler I bring in a Math control node. I connect this media in two to the input, the orange input. And I, I right click on the output of the rectangle mask. I drop it on the math control and I click on garbage math. I click on the math control under inspector. I expand garbage math and I click on invert. If I drag this to the right viewer, I've achieved this with just two nodes as against three nodes that I had before. As much as you can, try to reduce the number of nodes. It makes your effect run a little smoother. Third tip, when you pull in an image or video, it is 4K or larger than your timeline or smaller than your timeline. Let me see if I can get an image that we can use. This image, let's drag it to the left viewer. We have this. The size of this image, if we over, over it, is one to 80 by 1 to 80 but our timeline resolution if we click on this curl here is 1920 by 1080 if i want to use this on my project typically how i do this is i bring in a merge node i connect this to the to the green input that's the foreground and i bring in a background node that is transparent i connect that to the background i drag that here then it's placed correctly here then i can go to the merge and uh, increase the size to fit correctly, something like so. This works, right? But there's some times you just don't have time for this. So you can just go here and press Ctrl Space Bar, bring in a crop node, connect this to the crop node, and uh, bam, it does that. But it doesn't fit it in correctly. So you can move it around on the X axis, the Y axis, and all that but it doesn't give you the option to increase the size like I did for the merge node. Yeah, so that's basically that. Moving on, next tip 
thickness here, bring in our fasteners, and we'll drag that to the left viewer, go to color, click the alpha, go to gradient, pick linear. I say I put man. Yeah, I'm feeling done, then make it transparent. So this part is transparent. I say I bring in a background node, drag that to the right viewer, and make it a light shade of blue. Something like that. And connect this background that creates a merge node. Drag the merge node to the right viewer. We have this. Let's say I now look at this. I want this to be a little more contrasty compared to the background. I click on this shift space bar, bring in a brightness contrast node. And I decide to adjust the contrast, increase the contrast. You see the contrast is affecting this blue. To avoid that simple trick, just click on pre divide and multiply, and then it leaves this alone but adjusts only that. I go to fastness, no less. I go to noise and I increase this rate. If you play this, we see we have that, and then the blue background is still there. The same thing happens for color corrector. This is the color corrector, drag it in here, and like this here. If I go to color corrector and I increase the contrast, if I drag to the viewer, see that if I connect that here, you will see it adjusts, see it affects the background too. But if I go to, if I click on color corrector and I go to options, I can click pre-divide and multiply, then it leaves the background alone and affects only the image on top. So there are instances where you have a bunch of um, nodes open because you have a very complex thing you're just working on you do it in sections but there are some instances where the, the whole comp when you play it out is so slow you just need to make sure that it's a bit faster save some parts of it and render it out one way to do this is you press shift space by bringing the saver node now I connect let's say this is just one section of our comp you can connect this to the saver node and for the saver node, you need to specify the location where you want to save it. I click on browse. And let's say I create a folder to two. Double click on the folder, I give it a name. Let's say test. And we click save. Then I can go to fusion and click render all savers. It will render the whole thing here, including transparency. If there was transparency in the output. And bam, we're done. Now to now we use this on the larger node tree. I just click on shift space bar, bring in a loader node. And I pick the first file, usually it starts with 0000. Click on open. Then this loads everything here. So if I drag this to the right viewer and I play it back. So I can connect to the other node trees and continue what I'm doing. That way it reduces the time it takes to render a complex node tree if you have any like that. Next tip, back to the edit page. If I put my playhead on here, let's say I cut this part of the image, Control B, click on this part, Control B, and I have this cut, right? And put the mouse over this, I click on Fusion. It brings in the footage. But you notice something weird here. This is 1169 and this is 1515. This, I can put a transform node in between here and um, do a keyframe, maybe at the beginning here. Click this size, go here, increase the size a bit. Yeah, I go to the edit page. And then we have that gradual user I mean, That would be weird to do because you have dynamics and I can do that. But now imagine that I now want to copy. I want to do the same thing here. And I don't want to do all the steps I did in here to do the animation I did. I can go here and copy all the nodes in between here. It could be more than one node to copy it. And I go to maybe this part. Now, let's say I cut this part. I want it to just happen on this part. I click on this. I go to Fusion page and I click on Media 1. I click Control sorry control v to paste and um if i now go to the first keyframe you see the keyframe is nowhere near this cut that i made here this first keyframe is going to the very first keyframe on this first cut here to avoid this 
Let's control Z, everything we just did. Let's go here and cut again. Go here and cut again. And then right click on this and create a compound clip. You can give it whatever name you want and save it. Then whatever it is I do in here, let's say I go to Fusion page. I bring in a transform node. I go to the beginning. I click on size. I go to the end and I increase it. If I go here now and I cut this here, control B, I click on this, right click on this, make it a compound clip. I click, I make sure the playhead is on it. Go to fusion page. Sorry, I should have copied what I have in here. I say I go to fusion page. I copy this node here. Bam. Go to the timeline. I just put my playhead on the other cut. I go to fusion page and I paste that transform you'll see that if i go to this it picks it the keyframe starts from the very beginning of the compound clip but because this compound clip is shorter than the other one if i go to if I open the keyframe panel you see that the keyframe is outside here so i can drag this here into the end of this node and bam we're good to go and i go to this and i play it this has the same Ignore the movement has the same movement as this one has. A general rule of thumb is you convert a clip to compound clip if whatever adjustment you are making in Fusion page has to do with movement. If it's just retouching here and there, you don't need to convert to compound clip. But if you are doing movement and all that stuff, convert it to compound clip. Now, Fusion clip. Fusion clip is used when they say you want to combine multiple footage. I want to bring all of them into Fusion. Just right click on it. Click on Fusion Clip. Combine to Fusion Clip. Then you go to, sorry, I should have put the playhead on there. Go to Fusion. And then you see all three of them stacked together in Fusion. So you can do your manipulations in here. Put the playhead on it. Open it in Fusion. Now, let's say I bring in a text to 3D node. I drag that to the viewer. Let's type something inside of it. PD apps, right? Let's just extrude it a little bit. Like so. And I want to, let's say I want to move around to see the back of it and all that. E easy way to do this, hold down your middle mouse button and your right mouse button, then drag up and down however you want. Then you can navigate around. If you want to zoom in or zoom out, hold down your middle mouse button and your left mouse button, drag left and right. There to zoom in and zoom out. If you just want to move across the screen, hold the middle mouse button, click, hold down and drag up and down. That's how you navigate in the 3D view. Let's go to media pool. Let me just bring one of this here. Bring some other one here too. Cool. So we have this here. Let's make it to 12 view our close media pool. Turn that and drag this to the left viewer. So we have two images here. Let's assume that um, for this image here, the dog, I want to reduce the brightness a bit. Let's say I press shift space by bringing brightness contrast node. Yep. And I drag that to the viewer and I say, let me just drop the brightness just gain down a bit, increase the contrast so it doesn't look so bad. But that's a gamma idea, sorry. Double click on gamma, I see increase the contrast. Then just see, and we put that up a bit so it doesn't look so bad. And I want to compare to the actual original image. I can drag this to the right view and say, okay, kind of look alike and all that stuff, but not really, but it's not close enough for me to be able to tell the difference. So how do I do that? Note this thing here called buffer. Right now, this image is loaded on buffer A. I can click this drop down and click buffer B and drag this original image there. Then I click on this drop down and click on buffer split Y. So we have a slider showing the difference. Let's say I increase the contrast a wee bit more so you get to see the difference. So you can make adjustments. Sometimes you want to just make sure an object is 
perfect position to show two media inputs on one viewer and just slide around to see how it looks. But if you want to go back to the original viewer, just go to here and click on buffer A and you're back to where you were before. Recently, Blackmagic ruled out DaVinci Resolve 18.5. So this is how you install both versions. So I had 18.5 installed. So this is how I did it. You go to the beginning, you go to your C drive, you go to program files, go to Blackmagic design, you'll see a folder. You won't see, you won't see all these folders. You will see this folder, DaVinci Resolve. Just copy this folder and paste it again in here to make a copy of it. Rename it to DaVinci Resolve 18.5. I decided to omit the decimal to avoid issues, just put DaVinci Resolve 185. Then I uninstalled DaVinci Resolve and installed the older version, which is version 18.1.4. That one created this. So now if I go to the UI, I have 18.1.4, they have the 18.5 version here. Let me show you this 18.1.4, right? Let's close this don't save then I open this you see DaVinci Resolve Studio 18.5 you see it's not compatible Coco Dove has this coming up but if I click out of there the only challenge is this any project you open is converted to a format that you cannot open in 18.1.4 so if you have any project that you're working on 18.1.4 that is dependent on a tool that is 18.1.4 dependent, you not open it in 18.5. So that's it guys. Thanks for watching and see you on the next one. Cheers.